Cash is largely anonymous, untraceable and uncontrollable, hence it makes central authorities, in a system increasingly requiring total buy-in in order to function, extremely uncomfortable. They regard there being no legitimate reason to own more than a small amount of it in physical form, as its ownership or use raises the specter of tax evasion or other illegal activities. The assumption on the part of government today is that possession of large amounts of cash is indicative of involvement in illegal activity. If you're traveling with thousands of dollars in cash and get pulled over by the police, don't be surprised when your money gets seized as suspicious. And if you want your money back, prepare to get into a long, drawn-out court case requiring you to prove that you came by that money legitimately. Just because the courts have decided that carrying or using large amounts of cash is reasonable suspicion that you are engaging in illegal activity. Despite the supposed connection between crime and the holding of physical cash, the places where people are most inclined, and able, to store cash do not conform to the stereotype at all. Are Japan and Switzerland havens for terrorists and drug lords? High denomination bills are in high demand in both places, a trend that some politicians claim is a sign of nefarious behavior. Yet the two countries boast some of the lowest crime rates in the world. The cash hoarders are ordinary citizens responding rationally to monetary policy. The Swiss National Bank introduced negative interest rates in December 2014. The aim was to drive money out of banks and into the economy, but that only works to the extent that savers find attractive places to spend or invest their money. With economic growth and anemic 1%, Many Swiss withdrew cash from the bank and stashed it at home or in safe deposit boxes. High denomination notes are naturally preferred for this purpose, so circulation of 1,000 franc notes, worth about $1,010, rose 17% last year. They now account for 60% of all bills in circulation and are worth almost as much as Serbia's GDP. Japan, where banks pay infinitesimally low interest on deposits, is a similar story. Demand for the highest denomination 10,000 yen notes rose 6.2% last year, the largest jump since 2002. But 10,000 yen notes are worth only about $88, so hiding places fill up fast. That explains why Japanese went on a safe buying spree last month after the Bank of Japan announced negative interest rates on some reserves. Stores reported that sales of safes rose as much as 250%, and shares of safe maker Sekum spiked 5.3% in one week. In Germany too, negative interest rates are considered intolerable, banks are increasingly being seen as risky prospects, and physical cash under one's own control is coming to be seen as an essential part of a forward-thinking financial strategy. Negative rates in the historical record are symptomatic of times of crisis when conventional policies have failed, and as such are rare. Their use is a measure of desperation. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Anyone who controls the money controls political power, the economy, and people's lives. They want complete control over every part of our lives. They already control the political power, and they control most of the economy by manipulating the financial markets and with government, Fed policies. The only thing left to conquer is us, our few remaining freedoms, our privacy by eliminating cash, our 2A right to defend ourselves, and our human spirit. His takeover of the US and the West but they actually need world control has been all planned from the crash in 2020 where those were warned to sell beforehand as a virus was going to be used to destroy the economy and build it back better but China, Russia, etc. refused to bend the knee. I know for a fact they have allowed Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies to exist in order to condition people into accepting the end of paper money. I cannot understand people who think I am wrong and somehow cryptocurrencies will overthrow the dollar and governments. Really? Does anyone really believe that governments will just relinquish power willingly? I warned back on January 21, 2021, that big tech sees the power to overthrow the banks. They have promised worldwide that they want everyone in the banking system to end paper money, which is over 1 billion people. If governments take Schwab's solution and default on all its debt, then they no longer need the bankers to sell their bonds. Branch banking will come to an end and these people think they will move to a controlled economy with no private debt. They are out of their minds. Alphabet is moving to expand Google Pay into a checking account that can also grant users all credit cards and discounts. 
The Build Back Better slogan was actually all prepared in 2019 before COVID. This entire movement was set in motion using the virus to stage this event all for climate change. Every step of the way this propaganda has been orchestrated in high gear which took off in August 2019. The climate clock was turned on in September 2020. The Guardian even published that their agenda is to lock down the world economy every two years to meet the arbitrary agenda of the UN's Paris Accord. Our investigation of the March 2020 crash indicates that it was a fail attempt to crash the economy to roll out the Build Back Better agenda. Not that the crash was just six weeks and the move was 19.39% on the sixth week. To compare this even to 1929, by week six the decline was only 7.32%. The only comparison is actually the 1987 crash which took 8 weeks to bottom. There the 8th week was 25.31%. However, from the 1987 crash, it took 78 weeks to elect the first weekly bullish reversal. Here it took just 19 weeks to elect the first weekly bullish reversal. Here is a comparison of the 1987 crash with that of the 2020 crash using our energy models. Note how energy peak with the formation of the high whereas going into the high we saw a massive reduction in energy. When the market crashed, energy rose and remained high. Besides the fact that it was the shortest crash in history, the market was bouncing back rapidly. All indications are that those behind the Great Reset were hoping to create an economic depression and to undermine the stock market in hopes of overthrowing Trump. What they did not count on was the shift from public to private assets. When we look at the events and how they unfolded, it appears that this was a failed attempt to undermine the economy to support this Build Back Better agenda which would have been easier from a Great Depression vantage point as was the case to Roosevelt. The World Economic Forum does not allow transparency. They keep their finances top secret. There have long been serious concerns about Klaus Schwab's conflicts of interest and his lack of transparency with respect to the financial data of his World Economic Forum. With Schwab's unprecedented control over world leaders, it is not that surprising that nobody will ever investigate his operation nor ask for full disclosure of their operations. P.S. Those bankers and Wall Street boys who supported Biden, you have been played as the greatest fool perhaps of the 21st century. The agenda is you will own nothing and be happy. That means they take everything you own from property to pensions and 401k, and in return, they eliminate all your debts, so you will be happy. At the WECI warned that their Agenda 2030 would be brought forward and it will attempt to put in motion by 2022. They know they must use this momentum now to push forward as fast as possible. In between our current state of rapid degeneracy and the Great Reset, whatever form that takes, there will be a world war. What payment system we use after is hard to predict. Smooth pebbles are a possibility. Why this coming war is not dominating the news is remarkable to me. Even shills must see this is going to be a catastrophic event. People have a remarkable ability to suspend disbelief until it is too late to act. The next world war is already being fought. It started as a pandemic, and to devastate the US to allow China to take the lead. The end goal of this war is the same as in World War I and World War II, world domination by the worldwide British banking cartel. Except for Britain, North Korea and Cuba which don't count, no other government issues sovereign money. Governments borrow from banks that create money out of debt. Banks collect interest on everything. Banking accounts for 50% of the world's GDP. The solution is not to change money. The solution is to bypass the monetary system of the banking cartel. What is needed is a monetary system of we the people. The problem is the nature of the dollar which is a method of dispossessing us in a system where unearned gain is championed at the inevitable cost and destruction of earned gain. It's the nature of our system which needs to change, not the medium. The real issue is property rights along with the prohibitions we placed on the government. No interference with the obligation of contracts. No taking of property without just compensation. Yes, the federal government can require you to pay taxes in whatever form they so choose. That's besides the point. Your labor is your property and what you exchange for that property is also property. Property exchanged for property within the context of a contract. Simple. So you go to work for a business. You agree upon the conditions of payment. That payment can be in cash, check, or direct deposit. 
You can go to the bank and withdraw that payment, or exchange the check for physical cash. The cash is your property. Under the new system what happens? Your employer has digital dollars in an account. Those digits move from that account to your account. That deposit is now, and always has been an unsecured loan to the bank. Without the ability to remove that property from the control of the bank, property and all its constitutional principles and protections disappear. Why? Because the federal government through its created legal frameworks created the conditions that obliterated the obligation of the contract. The exchange of your labor is now, by law, handed over to a third party that considers its possession to be an unsecured loan they can default on, withhold, etc. And you have no recourse in law or equity. It is a fatal flaw. Welcome to the future where they don't have the printing expense. They just push a few buttons to move money around they don't have. At least Weimar Germany had to print the counterfeit even if only on one side of the paper to save the cost of the ink. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.